Welcome back to Modern Mystics. I'm here. And today, I'm actually a little nervous because it's the first time that I'm doing this show by myself, like without a co-host. And I'm also pretty excited because, yeah, I felt like today I would just speak more on the topic of stepping into magnitude because I feel like that's really strong in my mind right now and I even like feel emotional about it because you know last night I had some powerful dreams on the topic and one of them was actually about this bear and I was in the meadow well first I was in this meadow and there was like some kind of I don't know how to describe it like jumping walrus and there was like some crazy music and I was like, what is this? Like, this is like some kind of circus. And, and the feeling behind it was, you know, it was the past. It was something in the past. Like it didn't feel good. It felt like old, dead. It felt like littleness. It felt like my past where, you know, I just watched these like meaningless videos with my friends that really had no purpose or meaning at all. And just, yeah, they were just completely like nothing. And, that was what was happening in this meadow. And then the scene changed somehow. And then there was this dream of one of my friends from the past who still in my mind represents like this littleness. And really it's not personal, it's like people are thoughts. So it's like they just reflect to us whatever's in the mind. So it's like this friend was actually going to jail. Like he was, he was, he got arrested and he was going to jail. So it was like some kind of symbol there and then the scene shifted again and I was back in this meadow and this time I was just walking and I came across this bear and the bear was actually it was the bear was you know they have these homes underground and he was he was in his hole and he was just it was just his head sticking out and you know this bear was massive so him being in a hole with his head sticking out was still like at my eye level. And the bear was a symbol of the magnitude, the spirit. And he was just telling me, or I was asking him questions and he was talking to me. And I was asking him like, hey, did you always talk? Like bears always talk? Did you always understand me? And did you always understand people? And he was like, Yes, I, I always understood you and and yeah, we were just always in communication and you know, you're you've just been scared, so it's like I can feel that and I just come closer to you like very gently and and even the sim, sim, symbolism of him being in his hole with just his head sticking out was like so gentle even like a gentle symbol, because I could tell when I was talking to him, I was I was still scared. And you know, him being in his hole with his, just his head sticking out, eye level was like, okay, there's nothing to be afraid of. Like, I am a symbol of your magnitude, and but there's nothing to be afraid of. And you are stepping into that. Um, and yeah, it is a convincing process and a convincing job of that there really isn't anything scary about stepping into this magnitude. And, and what is magnitude? It's really, it's the spirit, it's the light. And there's this fear that if we f step in more and more fully that you know, we'll find out something very terrifying or, or, or we'll step into this power and you know we, we think we misuse that power and separate it against God. And if we step back into it, we'll see the horrific things in the mind and, there'll be this punishment and retaliation and it'll be over. Like there'll, there'll just be like disaster, you know, horrific things happening. And now it's like the Holy Spirit's job to just convince us that, hey, it's okay. Like you need to step back into the light, step back into this magnitude. I'll show you that nothing's going to happen. Like nothing scary is going to happen. It is a deception, but you need to look in that direction and keep moving forward so that you can see for yourself that it's a deception. And then the deception will just collapse and, and it'll be know thyself, you'll know yourself. And yeah, how does that come about? It comes about through desire. 
Like you have to have this desire for awakening, desire for healing. And then it's really about this deep humble, humbleness and saying to the Holy Spirit, just use me, just use me and following that guidance. And then he'll show you your special function. You know, in the course it says you have a special function. And that's extremely important because like we all have this special function in the awakening and we all have to play our parts perfectly so that we can all awaken because we're all in this together. You know, no one just wakes up by themselves. It's like even Jesus said, like, when I awoke, you were with me. So it's like everyone's in this together and we just have to find the special function and through the guidance, listening and following the prompts, joining with your mighty companions. And yet, even if you're thinking like, hey, I don't have any mighty companions. I don't know where to start. It's like, yeah, all you need is that desire. And then if you're watching this, it's like, and, you're like, and you have this question mark, who's my mighty companion? Like, I don't know what, what my special function is, but I have this deep desire for awakening and to find out and to follow that guidance. It's like, you know, it's like, I'm here. You're watching this show. Just send me a message on Facebook. Um, Andy Pedge, P-E-J, last name. And so it's like, yeah, there's always, there's always an answer. And I was just thinking, it's like my whole life I've had this like fog in the mind, you know, and, and like, especially before the course, like before the co course, it was like, forget about it. It's like, you're not even alive, actually. Like, it's like complete, like, you know, the zombie and it's like just these beliefs are just running the show and just life's just happening and things happen to me and things happen and and sometimes it's kind of nice and sometimes it's terrible and things are just happening you know it's like at the mercy of the world and then and this huge like fog and and zombification and yeah now it's like find the course and it's like okay we need to start lifting this fog in the mind because the fog in the mind is really covering over a lot of this fear that all comes stems from this belief in separation stems from like I've done this terrible thing and I'll never look back on that again and so it's like the mind produces this like symbolic fog so that you never look within again and now it's like having the courage and the willingness to to look within and and move through that fog through following the prompts the listening and following the guidance and and yeah, it's like the mind's asleep, you know, and every decision for the Holy Spirit, every decision to listen and follow is a decision for awakening. and It's a decision into magnitude. And so even for me, the sim symbol of sleep, it's like a lot of times, you know, the, the sleep thing has been really strong for me. So a lot of times when I seem to not get enough sleep, which is just a belief in itself and that there's many beliefs around that too. It's like sometimes I'll wake up and I'll just be like foggy. And, and then the ego speaks first and speaks loudest. So the ego comes in and says, yes, you feel foggy because you didn't get enough sleep. It's like the ego will just come in there and say, you feel this way because of something external, because of something outside of you. You're not responsible for your state of mind. Uh, things outside of you affect your state of mind. That's the, what the ego tells us. And now it's like, I have to take responsibility for my state of mind. So fogginess is not caused by anything external. Your state of mind is not caused by anything external. So I just woke up this morning and through this mind training, I just, I was like, okay, I feel foggy. And then the ego spoke loud first and said, yeah, you know, you slept kind of late last night. <laughs> and it's like, and this time I was like, yeah, no, I don't think so. Like, I don't think that's it. Cause you know, it's a convincing job too. So I've had so many experiences of not getting enough sleep and being really happy, like getting like one hour of sleep and had like the best day of my life. You know, that, those kind of experiences are really convincing. So, so yeah, I just woke up today, ego spoke first and I was like, no, no, I know this pattern. And, and so I thought, okay, what is the Holy Spirit? Like, what is this actually pointing to? Like, what is the prompt? What is the guidance that this is actually trying to show me? And then I remember this other dream, actually, and David was in it. 
and he was we were just talking together and he was like yeah andy uh have you followed up on this this project we talked about you know it's like how's that going and <laughs> and then i was like oh yeah you know i need to that's a prompt right there it's like i haven't followed up on that project it's like it's like holy spirit's reaching me through these nighttime dreams and and so when I woke up with that fog, you know, ego spoke first, but then I remembered that dream. I was like, okay, remember, it's like the fog, the solution to the fog is the Holy Spirit and His guidance. And David's showing up telling me a very specific project that I haven't followed up on. So maybe I should take that as a very strong sign, you know, and, and I'm just seeing like pattern for me too is with these projects that are guided by the Holy Spirit, sometimes there's some kind of delay or procrastination. And, and again, it's like this fear of stepping in, stepping into the magnitude, this fear of the light. It's like we're not really afraid of the means. We're not afraid of Holy Spirit saying, okay, um, go and create a YouTube channel or, or whatever. You know, go and write a blog or write an article. It's like we're not really afraid of doing the specific guidance, but we're afraid of the end. We're afraid of like where this is leading. So that's why sometimes, you know, there's this fear of following that guidance. And um, and so yeah, that was like, just a really strong symbol for me. And I, I and I remembered that. And it's like breaking this whole. It's reversing cause and effect. You know, it's like it was. Um, I think it was the last online retreat. But David just spoke about recently the strong theme of like reversing cause and effect and he even said google reversing cause and effect david hoffmeister and you'll find this really powerful um audio and talk and and yeah that's part of it so it's like the sleep isn't something external the sleep is in the mind and and the sleep and the fog are really the same thing and it's just following the prompts following the guidance and that will you know, help help you see through that fog and and then ultimately see like, wow, okay, there was nothing that I really needed to be afraid of. Like, it was all okay. It was like, okay, there was no, there was no God waiting to kill me as soon as I look within. Like, there's no, there's nothing waiting to attack me or punish me. It's like, but we're never going to know that until we fully follow all the prompts, fully follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit to really experience that. And it's always like a moment by moment decision. It's always like, okay, Holy Spirit, what is it now? What would you have me say now? What would you have me do now? It's, and, and yeah, if we make a mistake, it's like, oops, okay, what would you have me do now? And I am responsible for my state of mind. And the behavior just follows the state of mind. And And yeah, it's just following that guidance. And, and you know, if you have a communication role or the Holy Spirit wants you to speak, it's like, make no exceptions. It's like, you can see in your life where certain ones you want to speak to in a certain way and, and others you speak to in a different way. It's like, it's like really, it's like, where is my mind at? So it's not about the behavior. It's not about the speaking, but it's about, okay, I've given my life over to the Holy Spirit. I want to be happy now. And the Holy Spirit is having me speak to different ones and different collaborations and assignments. And let me notice where, where with certain ones, I speak a different way. Or maybe I compromise, I hold back. I don't want to say this. And then with others, it's like, okay, the Holy Spirit's flowing through me and I'm speaking, I'm saying what I'm supposed to and what I'm supposed to, meaning like what the Holy Spirit wants wants to speak through me as and then just noticing like those exceptions because the exceptions are where it really kills you like that's the compromise so i remember i i talked to a friend a while back and he's like he's like yeah i just noticed now i'm speaking with my parents the same way i speak with my friends and, and i speak with this person the same way as this way and it's not same way as in like the words are the same it's more of like like when I'm speaking, does it feel like I'm extending the truth? Is the Holy, does it feel like the Holy Spirit's speaking through me? Or 
am I protecting certain concepts or certain things when I speak to one person? It's like, and, and there's like this block with the Holy Spirit. It's like, and then with others, it's like, okay, they're easy to, to speak through, to have the Holy Spirit speak through me. It's like really seeing, okay, where is that exception being made? And that's really what, you know, that's what specialness is. It's like when there are special exceptions um, with certain characters and with others, and that's what we really want to look at. Yeah, and even expectations, you know, expectations run deep too, and a lot of times they seem to be tied into people like, I expect this person to be a certain way, or, or I expect something in the future with a certain person, or e even watching modern mystics and expecting Andy to speak, you know, it's like, <laughs> wherever there is some kind of expectation, that's another thing we just want to give over to the Holy Spirit too. You can just join me in a, in a meditation. And if you have a prayer or if you have any questions, you can just pray on that and maybe you'll come through me or maybe you'll come through a symbol later today. But. Yeah, and it's like when we follow that guidance and we, f we find our special function through following those prompts, it's like everything we ever wanted just comes to us. Like even those things that we used to really want and just ended up like not even caring about anymore, even those things a lot of the times seem to show up. Everything that will come and support your special function and, and even it's like, it's funny, I had this, you know, this idol, this phone that I really wanted and like a, a year and a half ago or something. And, and, and for me, it's like, you know, we all have our things. And for me, it's like tech. Like I always loved, you know, technology and like smartphones and computers and stuff like that. I always just really loved them. And the Holy Spirit uses those a lot in my functions. And, and, um, and yeah, it was like a year and a half ago. I really wanted this phone by Google, and and uh, and I see Mira up there, and she was like, <laughs> she heard a lot of this, and I was just expressing at the time, and there was some kind of like control, like, yeah, I really need this phone, and so there was a lot of healing with for me during that time, and I really had to give it over, and because it wasn't like the guidance, and and really it was more of like okay, do I even really need it? And when I was really honest with myself, I was like, my phone works perfectly and I don't even really need this, but there was some kind of like idolatry. In the, and the Holy Spirit doesn't want to give us anything that'll hurt us or be like a distraction away from the light. So it didn't come in. And, um, and actually I like when I, ha I actually disobeyed the guidance and I ordered the phone anyways. And when it arrived and I just started using it, I just like, I just felt terrible. I was like, I don't even want this thing, you know? So I just returned it and I sent it back. And then it's like, and then I came to some kind of conclusion. Actually, I was like, 
because the next year came around and they released the next generation of, of this Google's phone. And I was like, yeah, you know, you know, it's just it's still not good enough anyways. I'll just keep waiting until like the perfect phone comes in. And th this is like literally, you know, the thing with the idol, it's like, it's like, yeah, when this idol comes in and then heaven will come to earth and everything will be perfect and et cetera. <laughs> and so I made a decision that with this generation of the phone, I was like, yeah, my phone right now, it's, it's dying, but I'll keep waiting until like the perfect thing comes out and, and you know, it'll be like, ah, and it'll come down and everything will turn into light, <laughs> whatever. And so I made some kind of de decision this time to just keep waiting, even though my phone was actually dying. So it's like, that's actually a symbol of like, okay, maybe I do need to get a phone this time. And this time my mom was like, no, I'll keep waiting. And then actually the guidance came in pretty strongly, like you need to buy a new phone. And, and it was just a miracle because it was like at that point, I didn't even want that Google phone anymore at all. I was like, no, I'm just going to keep waiting for the perfect thing, et cetera. And, and the guidance came in to get it. So then I finally, I did buy it and it's like on its way here. And then I just, and it was so beautiful because afterwards, after that was washed, I was like, oh, wow. It's like, it came back to me. It's like, I, first I really wanted it. And then I was completely pushing it away. And then like neither of those are really the answer. It's just whatever the Holy Spirit wants for me. And then the Holy Spirit was like, listen, you need to buy this phone. And I was like pushing that away too. And then when I bought it, I was like, oh wow, this is so beautiful. It's like, I always wanted this. And I actually, I, I do really want this phone now that I'm, now that I cleared all this stuff out and now it's just exciting and it's, and it's part of my communication function, you know, it's it's going to be fully used for the Holy Spirit, for this purpose of awakening. And even recently, I went into this thing where, you know, I like, I almost forgot why I came down to Mexico. You know, it's like this, when I was in Utah, this inspiration hit me and it was like so strong. And I was like, I was like, Mexico, like I'm supposed to go to Mexico. And I started sharing with everyone. And, and then as soon as that inspiration hit, it's like I didn't even know why to go down to Mexico. Like there was no specific reason. But then I found out that there was like a shift in the structure. And, and here at La Casa, it was just going to be Anna over the house. And, and Anna's pretty new to all this too. And, and so that came in at the same time that the inspiration hit. Like I didn't even know that. So, so then it was like the inspiration came and then the guidance was like, yeah, you'll go down to Mexico and you'll support Anna and support La Casa. And I was like so excited and I was like, okay, wow. It's like, that's it. And then I came down here and then at some point some kind of fog came in and I forgot like the reason why I came down here and my priorities went elsewhere. And, and then the fog started building up. And my lesson too is to be really vigilant against that fog. Like it says in the course, it's like, in this world, you have to be very vigilant against littleness and you have to protect your magnitude because the world was made in littleness. So, so you have to be basically really vigilant against that. And the, that's what this foggy thing for me looks like. So eventually I like snapped out of it <laughs> and, and, and you know, it's like an unconscious decision for hell basically. And then it was, un and then it was a decision for peace, which is now. And then once I made that decision to come back and remember my special function and remember why I'm here and remember what everything's for, then it's like the Holy Spirit quickly came in and it's like, okay, you can see you're already feeling a lot happier now. And it's like literally the next day after I had that realization, oh yeah, I came here for this. Literally the next day, this like, you know, iMac Pro just comes in and it's like, oh yeah, Andy, you can use this iMac Pro for your function before I was using this computer that was getting kind of slow. And, and so it all just came in like after I found my, my special function. So it's like, yeah, the Holy Spirit's going to use all the symbols in the world that you like as long as they're not going to hurt you. You know, and that's not 
even up to you to decide. It's like up to the Holy Spirit to decide that. And everything's for healing. So in the meantime, it's like, yeah, if, you, if there's some control or idols with certain things and they're not coming in, it's because there needs to be more healing and then maybe they'll come in, you know, like with this phone. I had no expectations in the end and then the healing happened and then it came in. So it's like, really, we don't know what the Holy Spirit's plan is. We don't know what's going to be used um, in that plan. And it's just, we just need to be like clueless, cared for, cared for and cared free, which is actually the next online retreat, which is really sweet. Cause I really, I was like, I really want an online retreat about control and you know, the authority problem. And now it's like the next one is like basically go under Christ's control. So that was really cool. Really looking forward to that. But yeah, I just want to stay in like this, a deep state of humbleness and just of use me, you know, use me and, and everything's taken care, for, care of. And, and to keep stepping towards that magnitude, you know, that symbol of the bear. And yeah, just to wash away any loss, belief in loss and belief in sacrifice, like there's a strong belief in the mind. If I go towards the Holy Spirit, if I follow the guidance, if I follow the prompts, if I let go of my life, I'm just letting go of everything. And there's going to be a huge sacrifice and I'll lose everything. But this is a convincing job. And if you really want to be happy, there needs to be a, a trust, like a trust. It's like, okay, Holy Spirit, I, ha I have had experiences of this light. I have had experiences where I'm reading the Course and I do feel better. It's like, remember those experiences. Remember every time you choose the Holy Spirit and you feel better because that's the convincing job. It's like, remember that and, and that will get strengthened. You keep following that guidance until that gets strengthened more and more and you build more of a relationship between what is really the difference between pain and joy? You know, it says in the Course, there's a confusion between pain and joy. That's the only reason we don't listen to the Holy Spirit. It's because there's a confusion between pain and joy. Because what's joyful to the Spirit is actually painful to the ego. And if you think you're an ego, which we all do to some extent until there's, there's this experience of enlightenment, then there's going to be that confusion between pain and joy. So really, it's like follow the prompts, follow the guidance, experience miracles, remember those miracles, strengthen them by sharing them, and then there's fireworks going off, going off outside. <laughs> and then there'll be fireworks in your mind. And yeah, you'll be convinced that, wow, okay, the ego equals pain, the Holy Spirit equals joy, guidance equals joy. There is no loss and sacrifice in the Holy Spirit. So all that is part of the convincing job. All that comes as a result of following guidance. And, and there is a trust. Yeah. So thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me on today's show. And I love you all. You're all in my heart. And feel free to message me on Facebook anytime. If you have questions for the next show, just send them through. It's Andy, A-N-D-Y, last name P-E-J on Facebook. Just send me questions and maybe I'll answer them on the next show. And, and yeah, let's just connect. So love you guys.